The documentary you're about to watch is the most important documentary I've ever made. This story is far bigger than Tommy Robinson. This is about the weaponization and the politicization of these buildings. Court buildings across the West, the Royal Courts of Justice, ironically named. These buildings have been weaponized and used against members of the public to destroy them if they speak out. From Donald Trump, to Steve Bannon, to Gert Wilders, to Marie Le Pen, to Katie Hopkins. That's what's happening. My job as a journalist, I stand for freedom of speech, I stand for freedom of the press, and I failed. Because three years ago, when I lost a court case in here, and they bankrupt me to the tune of 1.6 million pounds, on a documentary, you're gonna see the entire story was a lie, okay? I failed because I should have come out of court and I should have played you that film. Why didn't I play you that film? Because I was given a gagging order by this building, by this judge. I was silenced, and I allowed them to silence me because I was scared. I was scared of two years in prison. I was scared of the effect that solitary confinement for that length of time would have on me. I was scared of jihadi gangs in jail, and I was scared of the effect it would have on my family. I failed me and I failed you. I'm not gonna fail myself again. That is a clip from the documentary called Silenced. It is by the British journalist, Tommy Robinson, who is joining us right now. Tommy, how are you, sir? I'm all right, thank you, I'm all right. Well, been better. Yeah, I'm grateful you're here. I want to, we only have 10 minutes together. I wish we had longer, but I want to encourage everyone to listen to the podcast episode that I saw the other day with you and uh, Jordan Peterson. And you did a fantastic job of outlining your mission and what you're speaking against and talking about and really not even allowed to do so. I want to encourage everyone to listen to that podcast to get the full backstory. But in the limited time we have now, what is, what's like your, your elevator pitch of, of what you're speaking out against and why it's so important you're speaking right now with what's happening in England. Ironically enough, that podcast has now been censored on, a view, on YouTube after 4 million views. So this is the problem. We wow. do not have freedom of speech. So Americans understand in Europe, we live in a post free speech era. It's gone. It's not there. It's a facade, okay? It's a facade. You try talking out against any of the government narratives, you will experience exactly what I've experienced. I'm a journalist, as you said, I'm currently out of the UK, and I'm awaiting a two-year prison sentence for creating a film, for creating a fact-based film that exposes corruption. What they did is they, they weaponized the court system, and this is going on across the West. So anyone who wants to watch my film, the only place you can watch it is on, is on X, and it tells the story which is far bigger than my story of Tommy Robinson. It tells the story of the weaponized judiciary and how a target is put on people and, they, and then they use the court system to bankrupt them, silence them, gag them. Now they've done exactly that to me three years ago. They gave me a gagging order through the High Court of London, which prevented me from showing the public covert recordings and evidence that I had. I made the decision on the 27th of July to release that film to 100,000 people. Since that day, I've faced total, element, total targeting by the globalist corporate media. I was arrested on terrorism offences as a journalist the next morning. I was held on terrorism offences. I had my phone seized and my right to remain silent was taken to me. The terrorism legislation, it's a bit like your Patriots Act. They bring in laws to protect your country and then they turn those laws and target them against dissident voices who are, who are exposing their own corruption. So I was sat down for six hours and grilled under the Terrorism Act where I had no right to remain silent. Um, so th there's a total attack on free speech. I don't know if you Americans have been watching since the riots in the UK. We've just had one 67 year old gentleman who's been imprisoned for 20 months for shouting, you're not English anymore, at the police. He's received a 20 month prison sentence for shouting, you're not English anymore. We've had people who have made anti-establishment, anti-establishment rhetoric on X and social media. They've got two years in jail. We've had someone who shouted, Allah, Allah, who the is Allah, who received 18 months in prison. That gentleman has worked for 49 years in the train industry, never been in trouble with the police before in his life, and he gets 18 months in prison for shouting that. Now, what that was about, and what these prison sentences are about, is terrifying and intimidating the British public into silence over open border mass immigration. The reason they target me, the reason I've, I'm attacked, the reason I face the prison sentence now, is because I expose the failures that come with open border mass immigration. I'm from a town called Luton Town, which is 30 miles north of London. When I was born in 1982, we had one mosque, we now have 45. So they flood the country, 
with whether it be Somali, Pakistani, Afghani, Iraqi, Syrian. And when you want to talk about the problems that bring, the real problems that come with open border mass immigration, they target you and silence you because it, acts, it absolutely exposes the flaws in their policy. It's unbelievable. Tommy, I'll tell you, I mean, we're talking to you right now. People are listening to you right now. And it's still unfathomable because we in America, we've grown up with freedom of speech. We've obviously taken it for granted. We can't, it doesn't make sense that you don't have it. Maybe it makes sense that people in North Korea don't have it, but in England, like, what are you talking about? Help us understand the mechanisms, like the hard, like how they actually silence, jail, arrest, and of course, chill speech as well. Like, what's the mechanism? How do they do it? Well, well, last year, last year, so the British government have imprisoned three and a half thousand people for their social media posts. Russia has imprisoned wow. 700. Russia has imprisoned 700. So whilst our government like to point at other countries to do a freedom of speech, as I said, I, I'm a journalist. I was imprisoned in 2017. I got 13 months in prison. I was standing outside of a court case, 30 Muslim paedophiles. We, we have a massive epi epidemic in this country which was facilitated and accommodated by the British government and all the authorities, they actually conspired to hide the fact it was happening, where a generation of our daughters were basically raped across the country at the hands of predominantly Pakistani Muslim rape gangs. So people understand the scale of this problem and why they've hid it. Muslim men make up 2.5% of the UK population. They're responsible for 90% of the convictions of this type of rape. So as a this is something that I brought to the forefront in my activism and journalism since the year 2009. Because of that, I've had all targets on me, attempts to defame me, slander me, silence me, imprison me. Um, but that time when I went to prison, I, outside the courtroom, I went, as the, as the Muslim rapists were coming back into court for their sentence, I said, how do you feel about your verdict? I said, I said how do you feel about your verdict? I was sentenced to 13 months in prison within two hours. So I was doing my job outside court. I got brought in from the judge. I got sentenced to not, I didn't even get to plead guilty or not guilty. No jury, no trial. And I was sentenced to 13 months under the law called contempt of court. That's currently what I'm being prosecuted on now. So I was sentenced to 13 months and do you know what the judge then did? The judge then put a reporting restriction on any of the public being able to be told that I was in jail. And it took a week. Whoa. It took a week, and it was only because American, Canadian, and Australian news were reporting I was in prison. None of the British journalists were allowed to even report it. We have a totally, utterly controlled media, and that's why, with social media, with X, with all of social media, and with citizen journalism, they have no option but to try and silence and destroy, because they have to control the narrative. And that's what this is about. It's about the establishment and the government controlling the narrative, which they can do with all of the mainstream media. Unfortunately, with citizen journalism like citizen journalists like ourselves, they can't do that. So then they bring in intimidation and they bring in fear factor and they start imprisoning people, which is what they've done over the last seven days. People have committed offence one day and they've been in prison within three days later. That's unheard of in Britain. That's unheard of. That is rushed. And, and then when they were put in prison for the riots or for posting on social media, most of them for posting on social media, they then done show trials where they live streamed the, the, the arrests. So they had the news there going through as they were raiding their houses. Then they had the judges giving video recordings. Now, I know in America you see inside courts. In Britain, we never see inside the court. There's no, there's no recording inside our court system. But literally, they rolled it out to... Put, put fear into the British public. They sent one mother, one mother of five children has gone to jail for shouting, for shouting, shouting. And what this is about, this is their tactic, because they know that the country was on the verge of a cultural revolution. We held a demonstration on the 27th of July where we had 100,000 British patriots. That's the largest gathering of British patriots our country's ever seen in one place. And because of that, they've, they come and try to shut us all down. So, as I said, I, on the 28th and 29th of October, the, the documentary that's pinned in my X profile, I faced two years in prison for that film. Two years in prison for a film in 2024, Great Britain. So, Americans need to, you need to understand the importance of your constitution because you're the only place in the world that currently protects freedom of speech. The only place. And to get what they want, they will have to come for that freedom of speech. So, I, I say you have freedom of speech. You do in person, but you don't really when social media is totally controlled. When big tech, Facebook, as I said, Jordan Peterson's interview with me that was on 4 million views, you now can't find or share that. 
So they have come for freedom of speech already, already in the arenas of debate on Facebook, YouTube, on all of the other profiles other than X. They've already took freedom of speech. So they control the narrative, they control what people hear, what people think. Google tells people how to think about certain people. But the most important thing about my, my documentary is everything you know that's happening to President Trump. Everything you know that happened to Alex Jones with a billion pounds. Everything you know is put into one film, covert recordings, tells the story. It's the unholy alliance, the media, the government, all of them working together in order to destroy people who speak. It's called Silenced. <clears throat> go watch it now. Tommy, let me ask you one last question before I let you go. Why, why do you do it? Why? Why? Why are you speaking? Why, are you, why do you... Just be silent. Just stop. Just knock it off. Just don't put out movies. Just don't speak about the problems. Just live your life. I know you got children. Just spend your life with your kids and, and don't worry about it. I, I have three beautiful children and I 100% understand what the reality is going to look like with another 10 years of open mass immigration. I am not talking about what I've read. I'm talking about what I've seen. I've watched my town decay. I've watched freedom disappear. I've watched the safety of our daughters, of our sisters, of our mothers go. It's gone. Their safety's gone. So what's more important? If I simply remain silent, I know that my children are going to be forced into a position of slavery, fear in their own country. They're going to become minorities in their own country. All, we already face a two-tier policing system and a two-tier justice system when we're the majority. What's it going to look like in 10 years' time? So I am that terrified. I'm terrified now facing two years in prison. Our, pri our prisons are controlled by Islamic gangs. So I'm terrified now, but I'm more terrified of what my country looks like for my children and their children. Every one of us as an Englishman, as a Britishman, as an American, all of us have a duty to hand down a safe and prosperous Britain and, and America to the next generation. We know what's happening what's wrong. All of us know the mass open border immigration is devastating for our country. We know where it's taking us, so we must speak up. How can we support you, Tommy? Um, just support my work, share my content, talk about the film. If you watch the film, share it absolutely everywhere. We do have, um, I face legal proceedings, prison proceedings. Um, I have a campaign for that at freetommy.com. But even just by sharing and anyone watching this, support citizen journalists. If they're citizen journalists, podcast guests, they're the people who can't be controlled by the establishment. Show them your support and share their content. Tommy Robinson, the book, the documentary is called Silenced. Go watch it now. Tommy, great to talk to you, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you.